So, good morning, Alma. We thank for advance on this break of this mooie event. I will continue now in English because there might be people in the audience who do not speak Dutch, and I want to respect this. Um, so today, um, I feel very, very happy to be here with you to give you a fairly brief introduction on Helpling on our business model, and just for context, highlight the opportunity that technology like presents or promises at least. But we're here not only to talk about the opportunity, but we're here also to talk about the debate around everything that is technology and impact on society, as well as like with helping on stage, obviously, particularly on the platform economy. Um, the title of the, the conference is reshaping, right? And reshaping in the real life in our context means policy. So I will also um, strive some impacts that we see from our experience that is created by technology. So with helping, like, we are a marketplace that allows private households to book a vetted and insured service provider within just a few seconds, right? We've built deep technology to take over the process and support across everything from the initial vetting to booking to matching, right, scheduling um, providers being able to send invoices through the system and taking also care of the payment. So thanks to technology, this process is really as smooth as you might know it from like an on-demand economy model, but helping is not really a, um, an on-demand model, right? So you need the microphone. <laughs> yeah, OK. So um, helping is not really an on-demand model. And when I say this, I mean it. Like 90% of our business is with recurring customers who have an ongoing weekly or recurring um, uh, cleaning through our platform, always with the same person. So we are more like a dating site that puts people together and helps them along their relationship. Uh, it's like marriage counseling, right? And with helping, we do that not only in Germany and the Netherlands, but we do that across nine markets around the globe. And like, I do not only say that to brag here how big we are and where we all do business, but it gives us perspective, right? It allows us to look at how is the market um, set up in Germany, how is it set up in the Netherlands, France, in all these different markets. And like, we will come back to that later. There are deep implications from the policy of the different markets on the situations uh, of people working in these kind of industries that platforms serve and the people who use platforms in general. Um, most important achievement for us is really that we have turned this into a really great experience for like both of our customers, on the one hand the private households, but on the other hand as well on the service providers. So you cannot get to more than 90% like recurring business if people try out your service, find out very quickly that it doesn't work for them, and then leave the platform. So that was a plant effect. <laughs> so, um, so much regarding helping. We can get back later on the details on that, but I want to talk about the technology as an opportunity, right? In general, and especially in a super, super atomistic, like fragmented marketplace, technology offers the chance and the promise of reducing transactional cost. Right? In a market where you don't have large entities, um, three people are very easy to coordinate with pen and paper. But if you look at thousands of people and thousands of customers in an industry, a marketplace becomes really, um, really chaotic. And that's where technology can help, taking over, bringing people together. And it has real life impact. So for example, um, we do the vetting process. So people can, make sure, can be sure if they book through Helpling, um, that they can trust the person coming into their home. But we also do something like matching. So we make sure that the service providers find customers that are very close to each other so they can uh, reduce traveling times, etc. So it becomes really tangible for the people using the platform. And I can tell you how great technology is. If it doesn't deliver real um, world and real life impact for the people, they will just not use our service. Right? So that's really what we are competing for, to use technology to create real life impact for people to make their lives easier, and on both sides. How do we apply technology at Helpling? On the one hand, for the customers, we are the platform for the ecosystem household. So we connect the household to a large variety of services, and next step, what we're doing in the UK is we connect them also to products. So with the famous Dutch Unilever brand, Sif, um, we are working 
um, in the UK, for example, to facilitate also access to cleaning material, not only to the service, but to also make sure we get the product in the house. From the service provider perspective, it's really like a software as a service platform. So they can take everything from finding customers to managing their relationships, managing schedule, having a schedule, um, and also um, everything that is related to invoicing and payment. Right, so for them, we are really like a small SAP for the self-employed, just that SAP doesn't serve self-employed people or service providers in that industry, but we do. And if you look at the people who use on the supply side of the marketplace, our platform, helping connects customers to three different groups. <clears throat> we talk, uh, talk about self-employed a lot today probably, but helping connect um, private hotels also to small and medium enterprises and even to publicly listed companies. Where do we do that? Like, we are agnostic about what kind of model. We have a um, tendency to prefer small and medium priced entities because obviously if we need to talk to 1,000 people, that's more difficult than to talk to 100 small and medium priced enter uh, sized enterprises um, and work with them, right? So we can only work with the existing supply side in the marketplace. So for example, in cleaning in most markets, you don't have small and medium price uh, small and medium sized enterprises. You really only find them um, in France, in Australia, who serve private households. Right? That's the big distinction. Um, and in France, we work even with publicly listed companies who serve private households and individual customers. So we look at the market and we work with the people who are serving private customers. And this is driven, we come back to that, very much by policy who's active in the given market. We're here not only to talk about the opportunities, but we're talking about the debate, right? And the debate very much evolves around um, labor market, low income, and social security, right? And like, to say that very clearly, we believe that it's, there's a big need for having a debate because the situation and like, our business depends on that. Right? Um, of the people working in that industry and very, uh, in many of the markets where we do business um, is not as good as it can be, right? driven by policy. So what are the common things that are thrown at us? People on platforms do not make enough money. People create a, uh, platforms create a downward spiral for prices. So this is a good example of how very often platforms are addressed as one big animal, like the Leviathan of uh, of the new age, right? But you have to look at different industries and different platforms. For us, example, for example, um, the prices um, uh, under which we put people together to work with each other through our platform are 20 to 50 to 60 percent higher than in the common market. So I think in Helping's case, we are lifting prices up in this market. <coughs> um, and I think platforms, people do not make enough money. Very often, platforms engage in areas where people in general do not make, an, uh, make a lot of money, and this brings the debate with it. Um, platforms are a threat for traditional businesses. Self-employment is modern slavery and destroys labor's right. right. So also, something that is very general, I think cannot be addressed for every platform, and to be honest, in my humble opinion, misses the real point of the debate. Right? We can talk about protecting incumbents, taxi union, uh, taxis, etc. But this really misses the whole point. It's, it's too specific. The real issues, I think, is income equality and participation in society. It is access to social security for sole entrepreneurs, for self-employed. Right? These are the two um, topics under which you can basically sum up most of the debate. And yeah, if it so happens, that you're building a technology company that like, provides a service in these markets, you very quickly get caught up <laughs> in the middle of it. Right? So in our market, yes, people do not get paid a lot. Right? Same for taxi drivers or the taxi industry probably. So you catch all the things that come across with that. In a market where you don't have small and medium sized enterprises serving private households, you deal with either the black market or you work with a sole entrepreneurship model. And yes, in many markets, sole entrepreneurs are not ex able to access social security and they are even like discriminated on some tax issues. We come back to that. So having defined those two areas, um, 
we really have um, to look at the policy that is driving this. And for this, I want to give you the example of two countries. Country A has a legal market as the first choice for both the service providers and the households in a country. Yeah, it has a thriving household market, um, and you have not only small and medium-sized enterprises, but you also have publicly listed companies serving those customers. In country B, you have a legal market that is not really attractive um, for either side of the marketplace. You have a huge shadow economy, um, and small and uh, medium-sized enterprises are not serving the private household market. So um, what's your guess? So country A, what's that? Just shout it out. Which country? France. France. You paid attention to the previous slide. Very good. So <laughs> it's true. It's France. Second country? Italy. Italy? Yeah, I'll thank you for that. No, it's Germany. So are Germans mavericks who simply hate roots? <laughs> I don't think so. Yeah? So we love our beer also because it's our beer, but because it has a law since 1500 something, right? We put up a sign that says you go 30 kilometers an hour, you don't take over, and you do that for 67 meters. No, not 60, not 70. Right, so I don't think it's really an inclination of the Germans to just work outside the law. Yeah? Sometimes I'd love to be so cool, but we are really not. Yeah? Um, the reason is policy. Right? So just in general, how does France look at the topic? Yeah, they look at the service sector as service à la personne. So the service to the human being. Right? In Germany, and I, from my experience as well in the, in the Netherlands, very often yeah, services are important, but it's not very often not really a job. Right? So this entire attitude is reflected in the system. In France, service à la personne is not only cleaning, but it's elderly care, it's um, child care, it's um, uh, very ma many other things, basically everything that we would understand as household service or for people, services for people in the household. France puts a 57% tax benefit on these services. Germany, 20. Yeah? 40%, 85% black market. Yeah, that's the difference. Um, in France, sole entrepreneurs have a VAT-free income of 33,000 euros. In Germany, 17,500. Yeah? Um, you have a sector-specific VAT rate. So, yeah, you've probably read this all by now. Um, but really, the result is the French market works, the German market doesn't exist and doesn't work. Yeah? Legal market, I'm talking about. Yeah? So, this has real-life consequences for the people working in that industry. Yeah, if you look at a service provider in France, yeah, the customer pays 12 euro. And we conducted studies. People are willing to pay 10 to 12 euros in, you, in general. If they do it through a platform like Helpling, we can up the price to 15, 16, 17 euros an hour. That's OK, because we offer additional services. But general willingness to pay is 12 euro. So French customer pays 12 euro. The cleaner actually receives 24. There's some social security that has pensions, that has health insurance to distract. So like for 44 hours a month, the cleaner in uh, uh, France gets after social security. I left out taxes, yeah, they're not so different. Um, uh, gets 813 euros. In Germany, they get 390. That's such a great deal, is it? So that's real life, right? They, these are people who make a decision, shall I work? like on the black market, or should I get a self-employed license and do the business? Yeah. If I want to serve private customers, in Germany, there are no small and medium-sized enterprises serving this market, yeah, because they would offer at 25 euros something, and because we do not have a 50% benefit, like, there is no option to work in private households for a small and medium-sized uh, enterprise. If we go a bit higher, yeah, 126 hours a month, around 30 hours a week, um, like 23% um, social security, they end up with roughly 2,000 euros. In Germany, VAT hits at 17,500 euros a year. Yes, you get health insurance for above uh, around 290, yeah, but then the health insurance is seen as the risk, as the risk is always dangerous, yeah, there's no pension in it. So that's purely health insurance. So you can really see how policy affects like what we all discuss. So how are people 
dealing with the situation. And as I said before, we would love to work with small and medium-sized enterprises. We love our business not built on working with sole entrepreneurs per se, but if they are the only people serving customers in a market, like we want to work with them and we want to share our experience from the different markets where we are active um, to allow these people to get a better situation, to get keep more of the money they make, because we're talking about the people who help other people for a living and in a society where, on the one hand, more women are um, uh, taking on uh, jobs and people are aging more and more, this is a very, very important topic for basically all of us. Yeah? Just look at the birth rate in France and Germany. All I'm saying, Germany is probably like 50% higher than in Germany. Right. <clears throat> so, finishing, like, I strongly believe that with the right policy, platforms can be a catalyst for good, but it requires policy. And that's why we are very happy to take on the conversation. Thank you.